I'm Ken Collison. I'm a mining engineer and a consultant, mining consultant, and I'm acting as the chief operating officer for Ucor Rare Metals. Great. And uh, Ken, please tell us uh, the essentials of the Bokan Mountain Project, the location and which resources that you hope to extract. Okay. It's located in south southeast Alaska. It's about uh, oh, 30 miles southwest of Ketchikan on the southern end of Prince of Wales Island. Uh, it's a rare earth deposit and what separates it from pretty well all the other deposits in, in the U.S. is it has a high percentage of heavy rare earths. And it's heavy rare earths that are rare, light rare earths aren't particularly rare, and therefore worth a lot more money, but also they're very strategic for the green energy business and defense business. Great. Uh, the Bokan project has received strong support from local native groups and from government. Could you speak about this and tell us why you think this is so? Well, one reason is the Ketchikan and Prince of Wales Island is hurting for employment. The other is uh, we've made a conscious effort to go around to the communities and uh, talk with them, explain the project to them. Uh, one of my pets is local hire. So you talk about local hire and training because that's to me is critical when you develop a new project. Um, it's just they're very good people, down to earth. Uh, you know, they sit, they listen, they have good questions. And generally, if you keep people informed, they're much easier to deal with, and they'll give you support. Yeah. Um, and would you speak about a little bit about uh, which stage the project is at currently? Um, you could mention the PEA permitting and feasibility, please. Yeah, we've uh, we completed our PEA and released it. Um, it was very good. Um, the rate of return was 43 percent. I know if I could find a place to invest some money at 43 percent, I'd be smiling. Uh, a $220 million capital cost, which in this business now is fairly low. So that's done. Uh, we're now going out for bids for our feasibility study. Uh, we have a new resource estimate coming out uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the resource we use for the PEA uh, didn't include the 2011 Diamond Drill Program. So we expect we'll see improvements in the, in the resource, uh, which will increase the life of the mine. Uh, you know, the mine is the ore body is open at depth and a long strike. There's other uh, prospects on the site. So, you know, typically mines, the trick to a mine is to get it going. And miners like to mine. So once they get it going, usually they make it last a lot longer. For example, Greens Creek, I think, is, is now up to something like three or four times the age that they said it would be uh, when they started it. The Red Dog's the same way. Um, you know, so that's sort of the gist of it. Uh, P permitting. We've, uh, we've been collecting baseline data, and uh, now that the PEA is out, and PEA, by the way, stands for Preliminary Economic Assessment, and now that's out, uh, we'll start preparing our plan of operations that we can then submit uh, to the agencies to start the permitting process. Great. Um, are you at all concerned about financing, giving investor worries about the recent Mollycorp fiasco and price trends of rare earth oxides more broadly? Well. With the economics on this project, I would be surprised if we had trouble financing it. Uh, we have a lot of interest from uh, end users um, because, uh, you know, if you were running uh, General Motors or Ford or whoever, uh, you're in a vulnerable position when you're relying on China for materials you need to make your hybrid cars and electric cars. And so there's a lot of interest uh, from the major corporations in the United States, which would help. There's a lot of interest from the state government. Uh, they have an agency called ADA, and ADA helps finance projects that are going to create uh, jobs and industry in the state. An example is they finance the uh, loadout in the dock facility and the road in the Red Dog. That's got to be, I don't know, 20 years ago now for $250 million. And then they, it's sort of like a, they rent it back to you. And so that helps a lot with the capital costs. Mm -hmm. and so, an example actually of local support just hit me is uh, there's a strong push from the residents on Prince of Wales Island to establish a road corridor through the Tongass National Forest so a road could be built to Bokan and to the Niblack property as well. That'll encourage, make it easier for our employees to get to work because we can make use of the existing ferry system then and a bus system from Prince of Wales and it'll also open up uh, markets to the to the businesses in, in Ketchikan easier because sure. then they can truck it to the site. Otherwise it'll probably end up coming from uh, Seattle or a place like that on the barge. 
and so there's a big plus to that. Okay, great, thanks. And the last question, uh, is it true what they say about the fishing up there, Prince of, <laughs> Prince of Wales Island? Yeah, I, uh, the fishing's amazing. Uh, my wife, i got to be careful, I, but no, we stayed within the limits. But my wife and I went out fishing for three days, and we came home with 196 pounds of fillets. Whoa. Uh, mostly salmon, but also some halibut. It's, it's probably the best salmon fishing you'll find anywhere in the world. Great stuff. Yeah. Thank, thanks very much for speaking okay. with us today. Thank you.